Welcome back. This is still why in the morning. Uh, we are on to our first conversation where we're talking about career development. You can uh, interact with us, ask your questions. The hashtag to use is why in the morning at Y254 channel and at Stephanie Ayeta. We have been joined by our guest. Uh, he is the founder and uh, mentor of Living Effectively Mentorship Program. He's also the global communication specialist at PATH. Uh, Karim Busana Douglas. Thank you so much. We're glad to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Okay, so uh, tell us a bit about yourself. My name is Douglas Waudo. Uh, I'm born again. Uh, I, as you mentioned, I'm the mentor for Living Effectively Mentorship Program. Uh, in short, is LEMP. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the purpose of the program is basically we run a structured 10-week program to equip individuals to discover their purpose but and uh, also to utilize their God-given potential so that they live an effective life as they also become agents of change in the society. Mm -hmm. uh, I have over 16 years of experience in the field of communication. My background is communication. Uh, and uh, I work for an organization called PATH. As we mentioned, I'm the global uh, communica communication specialist. Uh, and uh, I am married also. I have a little yeah. girl called Tanisha. And uh, I, I don't know if you need to, me to go into my education. To just uh, uh, Yes, we'd actually want you to start off uh -huh. uh, by telling us about your career mm -hmm. so that we can relate to it. Because we know that, mm -hmm. I know that uh, your career has been on an upward trajectory. So maybe you can tell us about your career. But f before you go to, into that, mm -hmm. tell us the difference between a career and a job first, and then you get into that. Uh, a career is, uh, is what someone is has specialized in, and they do it uh, for quite a long time. So they have gained experience of the same. A job, I will describe it as something that you do to earn a livelihood. Uh, mm -hmm. It may not necessarily be in the path of your specialization or education, mm -hmm. but it's just something that you do to uh, get you uh, a living. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about your career journey. I, it's, it's a long one. 16 years is quite a long one. Uh, I, first of all, I have, uh, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll just start because it's a long story. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll try and cut it short. So I, after I cleared high school, I went to, I did a diploma in mass communication. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, it was a two-year uh, program. And then after that, I went to study my undergraduate. I went to India, where I specialized in uh, mass communication and journalism. Mm -hmm. And then I came back to Kenya and uh, started working. I st immediately started working in 2006. I entered into the NGO world uh, as a communication specialist. Uh, mm -hmm. And then um, as I started working, I enrolled in the State University, where I started doing my master's. Uh, in communication, but I specialized in corporate communication. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, that was a two-year, you know, master's program. And then after that, I was still working for this international NGO that we were specializing in uh, agricultural productivity. I worked there for five years, and then I moved to a regional uh, position where I worked uh, on behalf of the Australian High Commission. I was supporting programs in 11 African countries. Mm. And then from there, I worked there for around three, four years, and then I moved to the UN. Mm -hmm. In the UN, I was there for close to four years. Uh, it's when now mm -hmm. I moved to Perth uh, because of the global uh, I, I wanted just to have that global uh, experience, and so I work for PATH. We, I, I support 70 countries uh, in uh, communication. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, wow. Uh, so with that uh, kind of expertise, you know, in this field, in the career, you know, from experience, how would you advise someone to choose the right uh, occupation or the right career before you know, when someone is out of mm -hmm. high school so how is the you know what what are the, the things to look out for to choose the right career yeah that's a very good question stephanie i think mm -hmm. very quickly i always advise because one because this is something you're going to do for the rest of your life possibly mm -hmm. uh, and that is why it's called a career so it's a long-term uh, you know profession engagement and so what I will uh, advise a lot of people is that um, don't be excited about a profession that has money. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, of course, money is a factor, but it should not be the main thing because it, it has to start with passion. So what mm -hmm. are you passionate about? Uh, what is it that makes you want to wake up in the morning? Mm -hmm. and, and it would be good to do a career that is almost like a hobby to you. And that is how you enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so you, you have to start by what, what are you passionate about? And mm -hmm. then the second thing is... Uh, 
uh, what contribution do you want to make to the world mm -hmm. as an individual? Because, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a believer that we have been brought here on earth for a reason and for a season. Mm -hmm. and, and because we are here for a season and a reason, you have to know the reason of your existence and it has to be connected to your career so that when you're working uh, mm -hmm. and whatever you're doing, you are touching lives, you're making a difference in your generation, but at the same time, you're also enjoying the journey. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so your career, basically, you're saying it should be linked to your purpose? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so what happens to uh, the students who are called, you know, by, by the placement and you're just placed at, you know, any cost that is there because... Uh, you can you don't really have an option to choose this is this is the one that I chose but this is the one that I've been called for mm. so what happens to you after that after the four years you've studied let me start by saying that I have actually mentored uh, for the last seven years I've mentored uh, the, this kind of people who really feel frustrated lost disappointed mm -hmm. uh, because they were kind of they feel they were kind of forced a cause that they really didn't want mm -hmm. and so uh, one of the things of course you have to look at different contexts depends uh, but one of the things i will tell them if you have had no choice in your career probably it's your parents that really convinced you and like you've mentioned also mm -hmm. the co the cause that you really wanted you couldn't get it and so you're given a second choice mm -hmm. it is just okay because it has happened you go through the course but at the same time i, I you should also follow your 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 passion. For instance, I'll give you, uh, uh, you know, an example. Mm -hmm. uh, if I was, for, for instance, for me, I remember when uh, I went into high school, my dad convinced me to do accounting and my elder sister, because she was, a, she was a, an accountant. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I went into accounting, I specialized in accounting, but it wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. I, I was really struggling with accounting. Uh, but I continued until uh, when, when I got an opportunity to university, I I started with it because that was the basis, but mm -hmm. at some point I switched, uh, when, I, when I got into my second year, mm -hmm. I switched into journalism. Uh, and, 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 and of course now I had this chat with my parents and, uh, and my sister and they understood this is what I really wanted. So uh, if, if you have no choice, you can still go through it. I've seen people who have gone through the, 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 the courses okay. that mm -hmm. they are, wasn't their first priority, mm -hmm. but then at some point they will switch to their main cause. Of mm -hmm. course, there is there is the issue of, uh, of finances and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, if worst case, worst case scenario, what mm -hmm. you can do is if if you continue with a course that you didn't specialize in and you get into a job, mm -hmm. you can get an opportunity now that you have an income and still go back to your main course. Uh, so you can still study in the evenings and uh, as you do that. At some point, you switch careers. I have seen a lot of people doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so uh, what you're saying is that for one to choose a career first, they have to look at the passion yes. and the interest they're in, and it should be aligned to their purpose so that they have fun while mm -hmm. they do what they want to do. Exactly. And in case you've gotten into the wrong uh, course, you find your way to change it <laughs> along the way, or maybe you finish it and mm -hmm. you are able to finance it after you get a job. Yes. So now for uh, someone who has... Uh, you know, uh, done the course that they wanted to at the university. So how do they advance their career from there? How do they develop their career? I like that. Mm -hmm. I, I like this conversation because this is kind of my forte. I really I, I enjoy, you know, sharing my experience and knowledge around this. Mm -hmm. So you have just gone through your career in university or in yeah. college and mm -hmm. you have finished. How do you then transition? One of the things, particularly, let me start for those who are still in campus mm -hmm. or in college, Okay. Start taking opportunities to volunteer and do attachment, do internships. Mm -hmm. Because this starts laying a foundation for you and preparing you for the outside world. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get to look for a job as you are outside in the world, you have some sense of experience and exposure and knowledge mm -hmm. of what goes there. I'm sure you've seen almost every job vacancy advertisement they always ask for some minimum level of experience and knowledge exactly. and so yeah and so you start taking advantage of this while you are still in school if you are already outside of school as you're already uh, outside of university or college as you're already as you're still looking for a job mm -hmm. there is nothing that stops you to also volunteer and do internship and do attachments mm -hmm. and and get an exposure because it will be very, uh, you know, uh, it will be a compare. You'll have a competitive advantage if you go to a job interview and you say, "I graduated last year, but at the moment this is what I've been doing." But I'm also looking for a job, mm -hmm. and and it shows a lot of. Uh, it's it shows someone who has taken initiative to really invest in their career. So I will suggest that that is one. 
of course the other thing is to continue looking there are a lot of platforms you can uh, find jobs you talk to relatives you, the networks people around you mm -hmm. but at the same time my main thing is don't just sit around mm -hmm. try and do something it may not mean necessarily what you studied but, but 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 as you do that you're also getting just exposure of how to relate with people expectations of the job market mm -hmm. uh, and and also you're getting knowledge of, of how to position yourself okay yeah so uh, basically they should put themselves out there and not worry about if money is coming in or not because you know they usually complain yeah. so what how do i get the fare to go to uh, this particular job so how do you advise them because there's also the aspect of uh, the finances so i don't i'm not given any tokens so how do i afford to to go to the internship or attachment every time I, I'll give you my own experience. I, I, if, when I finished college before I transitioned and went to India, I, I, I interned. I was actually an intern here in KBC. And, uh, in, and uh, I also interned at Transworld Radio and quite a number of them. Uh, mm -hmm. And what I did was uh, I used to ask for fare from my parents and also my uncle. When I came to Nairobi, I was staying with my uncle. Mm -hmm. And I would also just ask my cousins, the ones who were working, we had a good relationship. And, and, the, and they saw the initiative and they saw the passion and the hunger I had in, in getting a job, but also in just building my experience. And they were very supportive. Uh, because that is also one thing that I think young people need to understand. Mm -hmm. That if you need people to help you, you also have to show initiative. Okay. If you wake up at 11 in the morning every day, you know, mm -hmm. you are regarded as lazy. And, and no one will want to invest in you. But if you show initiative, you, 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 you know, you are busy, you, you are, there's something you are doing, mm -hmm. you, you are very supportive even in your own family, uh, people will want to invest in you. Mm -hmm. So you can ask around uh, and, 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 and get some fare. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember I, at some point and I, when, I, when I was starting my internships, I never used to have money, but I will walk to the internship. And then there's this, element, there's this aspect of... Uh, of, of, uh, of people declining internship opportunities of attachment because they're not being paid. Mm -hmm. uh, I will shock you that my first intern internship, I'm the one who used to pay the organization to do internship there. Yes, actually yeah. some organization ask for uh, yes. time to pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the bigger picture. It wasn't just, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the current, I, I need money now. I was looking at the bigger picture and uh, the bigger picture in terms of I, this is an opportunity for me to earn uh, and get experience and get knowledge and be exposed in the job market. Mm -hmm. And I know this will pay. And the dividends really paid. Uh, you know, now I've been in this field for the last 16 years. And, mm -hmm. and that is how I started. And this was a foundation I was building for myself. So it is important to build that foundation. Okay. And for a person who's uh, already working in the career that they want, but they feel stuck. Mm -hmm. So what entails, what, what, what does career development entail? What steps do they need to take to ensure that they are progressing in their career? First of all, I want to challenge anyone who has a job. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the worst thing of having a job, an employment for instance, mm -hmm. uh, is something I call comfort zone. Mm -hmm. where you know you have a contract, you know you have a job, you know by the end of the month you have a salary. And a lot of people slack, they stop investing in themselves. So the first thing is ensure you continually, it's part of, uh, basically, actually, that is the basic definition of personal development. Mm -hmm. So you always invest in yourself. You're equipping yourself with necessary skills. Mm -hmm. You get ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you learn new softwares. You, you, you continue. There are a lot of online courses you can do. Uh, most of them are actually free. You can just enroll and you do. And that is how you continue learning and investing in knowledge and that is how you continue also getting exposure and uh, and for those who are also working i always say do not specialize in your department mm -hmm. be exposed in what other what, what other aspects of the of the organization if you're in accounting have a basic understanding of what hr department does uh, have a basic understanding of what administration operations department do mm -hmm. because that is how you you increase your you increase your brand equity in the organization you increase your value mm -hmm. and that is how you become valuable in an organization but also that is how you get promoted mm -hmm. because you're promoted based on the value that you you, you bring in and if the if, if you came in with the same value let's say five percent mm -hmm. of the understanding you had and the knowledge and the experience from school or what you've gained over the years and you've not add on it, mm -hmm. you're going to be disadvantaged when it comes to job opportunities. Uh, I, I remember for me, for instance, by the time I was finishing my degree, mm -hmm. I had nine certificates and I had four diplomas. 
because when I was in school, mm -hmm. I will go for classes from morning to evening. In the evening, I enroll for evening classes. I will do a diploma in broadcasting, uh, digital broadcasting. I'll do a diploma in uh, mm -hmm. uh, video production and all that. Uh, and then I published a book. I'm an author of two novels. And mm -hmm. so by the time I came to Kenya and I was looking for a job, these are the things that was, I, I, I became very competitive and employers were mm -hmm. really, really looking for me. And, and after, from since I started working, just because of how I have invested in myself, I rarely look for a job yeah. because I get just offers. People mm -hmm. will come and say, you know, uh, we want to, you to work for us. And I've never stopped for the last 16 years. I still do courses. I still attend seminars and workshops. Uh, I, I have a general understanding of what my organization does from in all departments. Mm -hmm. So I, so I am al uh, always dependent on if a colleague goes for paternity or maternity leave mm -hmm. or a colleague falls sick, they will say Douglas will be a backfill for this person because I have general a knowledge of what the organization does and that is how you improve your brand equity wow okay so yeah. you you must focus on increasing your value every time exactly and ensuring that you're an asset to that organization yes all right and what is the place of vision in career development vision is important vision is the basis it's the roadmap mm -hmm. vision is the vision should be the destination for your career Okay. In other words, you should have a clear idea of what you want to achieve. And of course, vision can be broken in three parts. Mm -hmm. You can have a short-term vision, you can have a medium-term vision, and a long-term vision. Uh, uh, I remember when I began, I began as an intern for six months, and my vision was to become the communication manager mm -hmm. in the organization. And so it was at the top of my mind as a, an intern, uh, I, I, my, you know, I, I, I was doing it with, with the mindset of understanding how to manage a communication department in my organization. Mm -hmm. And that was, that propelled everything that I did. And I had to prove myself, I had to learn, I had to know what management means and what communication means and what, what are the needs of the, of the, of the communication uh, for, the, for the organization. Mm -hmm. And I was able to achieve that. And then mm -hmm. I gave myself another three, two to three years to mm -hmm. get a promotion. And I was able to achieve that. Then I gave myself, within five years, I want to become a bigger manager than I am and I need to work in a bigger organization than I was and I have been achieving that and at some point I remember I had a vision of working at the UN and I achieved that I went and I worked at the UN and you know when when I I, 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 I got to a point where I felt I have done my best in the organization uh, I was managing the program in Kenya I wanted to go into the region uh, mm -hmm. into work within Africa because mm -hmm. now I, I, I felt I, I, I'm bigger now than working in a in a country program and I went and worked in the region I worked in the for, for East and Southern Africa mm -hmm. and recently last year is when I transition now into the global position so you have a vision and now I have a vision of becoming my boss oh. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. I'm not fighting her but it's just a vision I have when I, the opportunity arises mm. you know I will be well equipped to take it up to take it up so I have a vision of my career and I also have a vision when I will want to retire mm -hmm. I will want to retire and pursue serving God and other things that have interest to me Okay, yeah. so it's good to have uh, to know the end from the beginning. Exactly. To know your destination. Yeah. And uh, how important is you know putting down your vision? It's very important. L let me speak to young people because this is where it becomes a bit uh, mm -hmm. a challenging and, and it's never emphasized as such. Mm -hmm. uh, let me start with the ones who are, who are in school, who are in university or college. I will encourage you to have a vision of your career. So you know very well, maybe if you're in first year, second year, third year, you know very well when you are potentially going to graduate mm -hmm. and let's say it's by end of the year or by end of next year or something you already know so the first thing the first vision should be i'm going to commit myself to graduate and mm -hmm. not just graduate graduate with the first class the honors first class. Uh -huh. yeah so you invest in that also because if you graduate with excellence it gives you a competitive advantage in the job market so you have to understand that and so you have to prioritize education Mm -hmm. As you go to school, you know to you you have to know this is the main thing now. This is my season. This is my time. This is my opportunity. And you don't joke with education. You actually just take it as seriously as it should. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you tell yourself, as I'm also studying another part of the vision. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm in college or campus. I want by the time I graduate, I want to have accumulated a two year two years of experience. Mm -hmm. So you start looking for job opportunities. Uh, uh, if you can work part-time, if you can in, uh, do internship, if you can volunteer, mm -hmm. volunteer is also important because it also, it just shows your character. It also shows, you know, someone who is a getter, you know, a go-getter, mm -hmm. someone who takes initiative. And then, 
so those are two visions graduate at least have some level of exp level of experience, experience and knowledge and exposure of the job market mm -hmm. and then you say the first year of my graduation after I have graduated i want to have already worked for a certain organization okay. by now you should as you're in campus you should already have an idea of where you want to work which organization there. you want to work to mm -hmm. because even you go to go to pray god, god tells you ask and i will give you so you have to ask god and say mm -hmm. i want to work for this organization mm -hmm. and so it helps you start connecting and building networks that is very important right. so you start building networks within the industry Mm -hmm. as you're still in school. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get out of school, you already know someone who works at KBC. Mm -hmm. If you have interest in broadcasting, you know someone who works uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in, in a marketing firm, if you have interest in marketing. And uh, you, know, you can start tapping. You don't have to go very far, start tapping within your networks. You have relatives, you, you have cousins, you have uncles who work, you have pro your professors, your, your lecturers in school. They know mm -hmm. someone who knows someone. You have networks in the church. You mm -hmm. can talk to people in the church. You have your neighbors, you have people in your community mm -hmm. you have your dad's friends your mom's friends you can always talk and and and, and network and uh, you know and that is also how you know having a, a some sense of a cv helps mm -hmm. because if, if you my mom's friend comes and visit i will always drop a cv and i say uh, oh by the way you know ready. i'm looking for an internship uh -huh. you know i'm looking for an opportunity to work mm -hmm. something like that and it always works okay. and and uh, so that is why you break that in terms of vision mm -hmm. if you're already working for instance like i said have a vision. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Okay. Where do you see yourself? I, I know someone, uh, a previous colleague who worked in the same position with the same salary, more or less, or the same for 27 years. Wow. Because of comfort so zone. stagnant, yes. Yeah, comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And at some point when us young people came into the organization, got into professional levels, we were being promoted every time, there was a lot of resentment and hatred mm. and jealousy from her side mm -hmm. because she thought she deserves the promotion because she's been there exactly. for long. Mm -hmm. But the organization does not look how loyal you are, uh, you know, so to speak. They look at the value, value that you bring, bring. in the okay. organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And you've introduced the aspect of networking. Mm -hmm. So people, maybe you can debunk the myth that networking is, you know, a form of corruption or something. <laughs> you've explained it well that you can network with your friends, your family, your neighbor. Mm. So, yeah, debunk that myth that networking is corruption. This is one of the, those topics I enjoy uh, talking about. Networking mm -hmm. is key for every person. And it's not just about when you're looking for a job or anything, but even when you're setting up a business. Mm -hmm. What is networking? Networking is just connecting with the right people and with the right opportunities for your success. Mm -hmm. And uh, networking is basically, you don't go for people because uh, you want to use them or you mm -hmm. want to abuse them. You go for people because the, one of the things I need to really uh, you know, emphasize about networking mm -hmm. is that networking is a give and take. Networking is a win-win. Mm -hmm. uh, so as I'm looking for a job, I am depending on you for support, but there's also some value I'm adding in the relationship. Okay. Because if you miss that, then it becomes an abusive relationship when, where it's <laughs> only one party That's that is giving. feeding on the other. Uh -huh. So, and, and so if, if, when you're networking with people, you also show what value you bring on the table. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, it's the same concept I always say when you're looking for a job or when you go for a job interview. When you go for a job interview, of course you need uh -huh. a job for your livelihood and for your other dreams and everything that you want. But at the same time, what the interviewers are interested to know is what value are you bringing, bringing in. in the organization. And so that is the same uh, concept when you use for networking. And uh, I, I, I shudder sometimes seeing how people are sitting on a gold mine called networks. Uh -huh. And they have never known how to utilize it. Mm -hmm. I will ask you a simple question. If any of our viewers who are watching right now, everyone I'm, I'm assuming they have a phone. Mm -hmm. And that phone, there's something called a phone book. You have addresses. There are people there if you could just strategically look at those contacts as a potential network. Mm -hmm. It will do magic to your business, to your career. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't have to call people and ask, I need a job. Sometimes you just check on people. Because also networking is basically is the establishment and the maintenance of, of relationships. Okay. So you establish, but you also maintain. So that by the, when the day I will need help, mm -hmm. we already have a rapport. We already have a relationship. relationship. Uh, you and I know very well, uh, you know, of all those friends you 
last pop when you're in high school mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they have put you in their wedding committee <laughs> you feel abused yes because actually. you're like hi i've not talked to him for 20 years how, how dare he now put me in his wedding committee and he's asking me for twenty thousand? yes you know and and that is the same thing when people feel when 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 there is no maintenance of of of, of, of a network mm -hmm. but but over and above networking is very important mm -hmm. um I'll just give you an example very quickly. Uh, it's a biblical one. So uh -huh. when Jesus comes on the scene, the mm -hmm. first thing he does before he puts mm -hmm. his, he, he, before he starts, uh, you know, preaching the gospel, he puts together a network of 12 people. Mm -hmm. And these are the people that helped him to achieve his mission on the earth. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing we should be investing in ourselves, always making sure you have a network. Mm -hmm. Always make sure you have someone. It is ridiculous for me if you're trying to get into the job market and you don't have any new networks, or you're not talking to anyone in the job market, because how do you know what is going on? How mm -hmm. do you know your expectation? Most of the questions I usually hear is how, what salary should I quote in a job interview? Mm -hmm. Networks help you, because if, if, for instance, if you're trying to get into the world of communication, because I've been there for 16 years, I can tell you if you're an entry, there's a certain salary should ask, never ask more than this, because that is based on your value and your knowledge and your experience at the level you are. And mm -hmm. so I'm able to help even as you go to for interviews. So okay. you go there with knowledge. All right. Yeah. So that's about networking. Thank you for that. And uh, well, we also want to know, how do you build the right networks? How do you identify the right networks? Good. So I classify networks on different mm -hmm. levels. But over and above, so in, in terms of, you know, as I'm a student, there are, are networks I want. Mm -hmm. If I'm already working, there are potential networks that I want. But once your question very simple, how do I build a network? Number one is make sure that you have a, vi you have a goal. Mm -hmm. So a goal of, a, a vision in terms of, remember the vision we had of, I have to have a job at this time. So you, you, you just draft something very small and say, you know, I want to go into the marketing world. Mm -hmm. That is my career. I want to, to be a marketer. And so who within my network is a marketer or who knows a marketer? Mm -hmm. And then you start, so as you interact with people, these are questions you ask your relatives, you know, uh, the, the kind of people I had just mentioned, you know, people at church and all that. Yeah. And then uh, you start getting people's addresses, mm -hmm. contacts, and you informally or formally start getting in touch with them. You can do them an email and attach your CV and they say, you know, hi, Stephanie, my name is Douglas. Uh, I, I am a student or I've just recently graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, I am reaching out to for you if you ever come across any opportunity in marketing. Mm -hmm. So that is a very wonderful way of networking. Okay. I have seen young people who have gone ahead and printed business cards, you know, and mm -hmm. just say university graduate, you know, yeah. in terms of position, or they will even brand themselves, mm -hmm. you know, communication specialist or something. And they will hand it over to people and say, you know, if you ever get any opportunity uh, in, in communication, kindly get in touch with me. Mm -hmm. So that is what well, that for me, that is one of the very f basic but very effective way of networking. Another one is social media. You should not forget this. Yeah. Social media is such mm -hmm. a resource in terms of networking. There's they, someone I came across on Twitter who had put a link of his CV mm -hmm. on Twitter and he had done, he had pinned that tweet yeah. and I really loved it. And, and people are so excited and they helped him. And I followed his story because I, I know eventually he got a job. Mm -hmm. And so that is also one way of networking. Make sure you, if you, you want to go into your profession, make sure you have a wonderful LinkedIn account, for instance, mm -hmm. you keep on updating it because that is also how you get, because LinkedIn is a, is a group of professionals. Mm -hmm. It's a worldwide, it's a wonderful, effective, you know, uh, an effective uh, vehicle for networking. How do you use your, your social media? If I go to your social media, mm -hmm. what, uh, what is it that I get? What are, what are the vibes of your social media? Okay. Do, do, do I scan through your social media and the first impression I get of you is just a party animal mm -hmm. and yet you want to go into professional, mm -hmm. uh, a professional, uh, you know, uh, a profession uh, yeah. course, uh -huh. uh, you know, wh what are the vibes? What do you talk about? How do you package yourself? What is your brand mm -hmm. on social media, for instance, you know, because that is one of the best way of networking and what a lot of people do not know is that most of these organizations mm -hmm. by the time they use social media as also part of uh, deciding who when they're shortlisting people to come for the interview mm -hmm. and actually most of them visit your social media so they want to see what kind of a person you are mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. And so a lot of us actually disqualify ourselves from job positions and job opportunities because just by virtue of how we use our social media platforms. Wow. Okay. So it is very important to brand yourself well on social media if yes. you want to attract the right opportunities. Uh, as we come to a close of this uh, interesting conversation, let me quote you and some of the statements that I've had you make mm -hmm. in your forums. Uh, your value goes up with the problems you solve. Mm -hmm. And if you're waiting on the Lord, do what waiters do. Wait. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So what, what do they mean in, term, in <laughs> relation like to that. this? Yeah, your value essentially goes up based on the problems you solve. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's good you've mentioned this because I think this will be a really good, uh, you know, uh, conversation particularly for people who are listening and they're looking for jobs or they, are, they mm -hmm. want to improve their career. You have always to look yourself as a problem solver. Mm -hmm. And uh, you always have to look for a potential job position as a, as a problem and mm -hmm. the recruiters or the organization is looking for someone to solve the problem and so you package yourself as a problem solver when it comes right down to it what organizations are looking for in terms of employing people mm -hmm. is who can solve a problem better okay and so when you go for a job interview for instance that is essentially what they're looking for are you able to solve the problem we have we have a problem with communication okay. in our organization so we are looking for communication manager mm -hmm. and they go ahead and do for you a job description they say we are looking for someone who can develop and implement a corporate communication strategy we, that someone should be a kenyan citizen that someone should have a basic computer knowledge that someone so they're already tell, t telling you the kind of person they are looking for to solve the problem mm -hmm. so your work is to go and prove to them that the person you're looking for mm -hmm. it is me it's me Okay. The other aspect of it I don't want uh, to forget to mention, as you're also looking for a job, mm -hmm. nothing stops you from being a job seeker. Mm -hmm. I mean a job creator. Mm -hmm. As you're a job seeker, nothing stops you from being a job creator. Mm -hmm. A job creator basically is you start using the gift and the talents and the, and the knowledge and the networks you have mm -hmm. to start making money. I have a novel here which, which I brought for you. Oh, I, I published you. this novel when I was almost graduating mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in third year. Mm -hmm. And uh, during my free time, I'll write the novel. This is my second novel. The first one is called Confessions of a Foreign Student. Mm -hmm. And this novel, I am mm -hmm. earning money as I'm, already, uh, I'm working because I'm selling it. Mm -hmm. And so I used my passion for writing to put into a novel and I sell it and I make money out of it. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage young people also, look for something you can do, mm -hmm. look at your passion. If you're good in writing stories, if you're mm -hmm. good in, uh, in, 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 in writing poetry, package mm -hmm. that. If you're good in making mandazis, if you're good in software development, you don't have to look wait uh -huh. to be employed to mm -hmm. start using your skills. Okay, so start with what you have. Yes. Okay, thank you for the novel. Can I uh, get the novel? <laughs> there you Can go. I get it? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. I do have my novel right here called The Dev yeah. Devil's Favorite yeah. Demon. I will definitely... Uh, I uh, take uh, have a read, you know, and uh, I'm sure I'll enjoy it. Thank you. So thank you thank very you. much for coming on board, Douglas. Uh, maybe you can give us your final remarks as you tell us where people can find you. If uh, the guys who want to join the mentorship program, how will they get in? I That's can be found on, on social media. You just mm -hmm. go to Facebook, Douglas Waudo. You'll find me on Twitter at Douglas Waudo. I'm also mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, Douglas Waudo. Uh, and... Uh, my contacts are there. We also have a website for the mentorship program, LEMP, that is e l e m p dot co dot k e l e m p dot co dot k e. You'll find all the information about the mentorship program, when to enroll, and what we do. Okay, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much, Douglas. Really appreciate the insights that you've given us on this particular topic, career development. We're looking forward to have you again in the show. Thank you for having me. All right. So uh, we have come to the end of the first conversation, but uh, we'll be right back with the next conversation on youth and politics. We have Ram Agoko for that. We continue with the conversation at Y254. The hashtag to use is Y in the morning. We take a short break. We'll be right back.